Okay, so today we're going to continue the discussion of uh, the solution of inhomogeneous second order differential equations with the constant coefficients. Uh, let's look at the following problem. It's 2y equals to, uh, let's say, 20 exponential 3t. So uh, we have learned last time that if we forget about this uh, right hand side, we can just solve the auxiliary equation and uh, we find the two rules. Uh, we get the two solutions, uh, y1 and y2. If the two rules are different, then we can get it automatically, just the exponential r1t, exponential r2t. If the two rules are the same, then some care must be taken, especially you know, we need to multiply t in front of exponential r1t to get a second linearly independent solution. Now we want to deal with the inhomogeneous equation. Therefore, we need to find a particular solution. Uh, last time we said, uh, if the right-hand side is a polynomial, then in general, you can uh, assume the uh, particular solution also is a linear combination of a polynomials. Then we used the method in chapter four to convert the infinite dimensional problem to a finite dimensional problem. And uh, uh, then the rest of the thing is just to solve a linear system. Now we consider another class of the right hand side, which is exponential function. Again, uh, Let's just uh, make some so-called educative guess. Because exponential functions, they're nice uh, when you uh, take derivatives. I take, uh, let's say, exponential alpha t, I take a derivative, is still alpha times exponential alpha t. If I take a second order derivative, alpha square would pop up. So it's kind of natural for me to think about the uh, method of undetermined coefficients to be uh, c times exponential 3t. And then we try to see whether we can figure out a constant c so that this is satisfied. So we just do it, uh, prime. So this is 3c exponential 3t. And I take double prime. So this is uh, going to be 9. And this is 9c 3t. OK, so good news. That is, uh, for all the terms, they are just a, a multiple, constant multiple of exponential 3t. So we have converted this problem to an algebraic equation, as we have seen before. So we have exponential 3t. The first term is 9c. The second term is a 3 times that is 9c. 2 times that is 2c equals to 20 times 3t. Now, it just becomes an algebraic equation with only one variable. Therefore, this just gives me this 20 equal to 20, so c equals to 1. That is, yPt is just an exponential 3t. Now that we have found a particular solution, the general solution would, to, uh, would look like, so let's see. So this one, uh, you can factorize to be r plus one, r plus two, and therefore this is c1 exponential t, exponential minus two t, and then plus ypt, this particular solution. Any question? Okay, so it uh, looks really simple and straightforward. Uh, let's look at another example. Exactly the same left-hand side, but the right-hand side is changed. Exponential minus 2t. Say, okay, this is easy. Try y t equals to c exponential minus 2t and we'll just uh, throw that into the equation and try to see whether the right-hand side will be that. Um, this doesn't work. Why? Because 
if I write as before, the left hand side, this one I call it a ty, it's an operator mapping an infinitely differentiable function to another infinitely differentiable function, so t, then t exponential minus 2t equal to 0, as we have seen here. That is the right hand side, which is this guy. It belongs to the north space of the operator t. If it belongs to the north space, we cannot use this method really because this one, you apply anything, it will be zero, it will not be a non vanishing right hand side. How do we deal with this? Um, uh, we can make another educative guess, which is uh, the approach taken in the book. Uh, but I want to say that we can still use this uh, idea that I make an absolute perturbation and see whether I can see anything that's useful. Uh, it's not really, you don't necessarily need to know this method, but I hopefully with this uh, absolute perturbation, it makes the so-called educative guess more natural to you. The idea of the absolute perturbation is uh, I look at a slightly different problem. Two y epsilon equals to two plus epsilon t. I mean, I can choose other forms of the perturbation as well, but uh, let me say I choose this. Um, so in this case, because I know that now this does not belong to the north space of T. I can uh, use the previous method. The solution would be dependent on epsilon minus two plus epsilon T. And uh, uh, this one, I just uh, put uh, uh, throw it there, and this is C epsilon minus two plus epsilon T. The first one take two derivatives squared. Uh, take a first derivative gives you a minus, and uh, without the derivative is two equal to plus epsilon T. So we again get a algebraic equation. This one, the leading, the constant term is four minus six plus two, so that's zero. For the epsilon term, this is a four epsilon minus three epsilon, so this is epsilon, and uh, then I have a epsilon squared. Is everyone following? Any question? Um, how do you get the stuff in the bracket? You just uh, take the derivative. So you take uh, two derivatives, so you get two plus epsilon squared, one derivative, so on and so forth. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay, so these two cancel and we get C epsilon is one over epsilon plus epsilon squared. So we kind of get a really weird solution, which is one over epsilon plus epsilon squared exponential two plus epsilon t. That's right. Um, this one, if I take an epsilon equal to zero, it blows up because this is a constant and this one is a going to infinity, so that's not good. So any suggestion what, what I can do with this point? So that I can take a limit epsilon go to zero in a meaningful way. You can just unmute yourself. So what I want to do is is want to subtract something. 
And hopefully I subtract something so that one, this thing has a limit. Two, when I subtract this, it doesn't make any difference. What kind of thing can I subtract so that it doesn't make any difference? Zero. Sorry? Uh, zero, right? So well, more specifically, it's something in the north space of T. Because if I subtract something from the north space of T, when T applied to Y epsilon, that's going to vanish. So what should I subtract here? Could you subtract C E to the negative 2 T? Very good. So if I subtract this, this is in the north space of T. You can also try to subtract zero, but th that doesn't help with respect to the first uh, requirement. That is, the whole thing has a limit. Um, now, if I subtract exponential minus 2t, then this one, you do a Taylor expansion. The leading order is order epsilon, which is going to cancel with this. So the limit when epsilon goes to zero from the plus direction, say, this one um, is exponential minus epsilon t. So that's minus epsilon t. So this is minus t, 2t. Um, very quickly, why e to the negative 2t is in a null space? Because uh, here, right? You just check that. So, so this one has two roots. One is minus one, one is minus two. So the minus two guy is in the null space. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So very similar to what you have seen before. When there is a in it's in the null space, what saves you is this extra polynomial factor t. And how do you get this polynomial factor? One way to think about that is to um, uh, to think in terms of this limiting process. But this is really to, um, uh, I mean, you can think this is like a, a way to convince you, uh, you should take uh, this kind of form. Uh, instead, once you know, it always takes the form of some polynomial times exponential minus 2t, you can make an educated guess. That is why pt is some constant times t exponential minus 2t, and then see whether it works. So uh, we can just check. So yp prime t, so this one is a c, take a derivative, minus 2t, and then minus 2t. That's the first term, the second term. So minus two, minus two, so that's minus four. And then I have plus four t. So now I have y double prime, single prime, two y. This is the exponential times constant part. Um, ah, there is a, the t part. So the t part, so that one will, uh, let's see, there are two parts. C t minus 2t. So this one is full, and uh, this one is minus, minus. Uh, 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 six, this one plus two, so it vanishes. That's good news because what we want is only this. This is minus four, this is plus three, this is zero, so we have minus c minus two t, so we get c equals minus one or yp. T equals to minus T exponential 
minus 2t. So it's exactly the same as we got here. So of course, if you, you I mean, if you already know the know that the solution must take this form, you could directly make this guess. But if you're not so convinced why you want to do this at all, so with this epsilon, uh, yeah, epsilon perturbation is another way to understand. Any question? Professor, could you go back to the part where you added the t to the, in front of the e to the negative 2t at the end of the epsilon perturbation? Okay. How yeah. did that simplify down to uh, minus t e to the negative 2t again? It take a limit, right? So, uh, so this is like uh, uh, exponential minus uh, 2 plus epsilon t. So this is exponential minus 2t, exponential epsilon t. So this is exponential minus 2t, 1 minus epsilon t. And then you have a uh, plus order epsilon square term. And that epsilon square, when you take a limit, is going to go to zero. So, uh, uh, so you have a, you have a, uh, so there is a minus epsilon plus epsilon, so minus t. Now, did that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so um, as you can imagine, if the question is the right hand side takes the form ex exponential minus t, it's also a root, so you're going to do the same way. Now let's uh, consider yet another problem. So, y equals to t. Um, so let's check auxiliary equation. So this is, you might have smelled uh, where this is going. Have a, this, so this is R1 equal to R2 equals to one. So you have two repeated roots. We have two repeated roots. And the right hand side is uh, exponential alpha key. Alpha is not equal to one. It's not, doesn't matter. And you just uh, take the uh, thing as before, y t equals to exponential alpha t times a constant. But now you see, I'm taking this to be exactly the root. So uh, exponential t, uh, so this one is zero. So that rules out the uh, this, this one, but also t exponential t is zero because that's also in the north space. What should we do? Any suggestion? This one doesn't work. This one doesn't work. Can someone make a so-called educated guess? T squared. Very good. So let's try T squared. Um, so this is T squared um, exponential T. Um, it's not that clear how you come up with this. Well, one way is to do the epsilon perturbation again, and now you don't expand, you know, do the Taylor expansion to the first order because first order would vanish, you do the second order. Uh, but in the end, it's likely we're going to end up with a solution of this form. So let's directly assume this is the case, and we try to solve the, for the constant c and see whether uh, this would work. So y prime t is c 2t t, t. and uh, this is t squared exponential t y double prime t, do it yet again. So this is a c two 
t and this is four t t and this is t we just collect the terms so then y prime minus two plus one um, this is c exponential t inside let's uh, collect um, the first one is we'll only collect the constant terms so two and then i have a minus two uh, actually there's a zero and uh, this guy uh, plus zero zero and then i have c exponential t times t so this one is full this one's minus four plus zero so zero that's good news exponential t square t square of this one which is one t square minus two t square one so indeed you see this term this term they're zero and i have equal to 2c exponential to the t equals to exponential to the t gives me c is one half or ypt is one half t squared exponential to the t any question i have a quick question could you explain how you got two zero zero four negative four zero and then i'm just those numbers again i'm just collecting the coefficients so oh i see okay I, okay okay any other question i mean the calculation i did was a little bit fast but uh, it's a rather elementary computations so summarizing this procedure we have really talked about all the cases for a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. We consider the problem of finding a particular solution for this. All the rest of the solutions, you can just add the whole solution to the homogeneous part. So the cases can be uh, discussed in terms of a table. So, um, so this is a, uh, uh, so let me see. So let me just uh, talk about this first. So first, uh, this is R, and this is PT. And now I would like to talk about the case where R is uh, not a root. Root means for the root of auxiliary equations, R squared plus BY. Uh, br plus c if this is not a root then the solution should take the form r t if it is a single root whether this is a real or complex then the solution just to take the form c t exponential r t and if, if it is a double root on the repeated root, the guess is C T squared exponential RT. And you can just verify that this works. Uh, um, yeah. Would this be, um... Would like a triple root be t to the third and there's no triple root so we're talking about the second order equation okay sorry so that's it these are all the cases but you are right so if indeed you are talking about a third order differential equation then you just uh, go up again again okay so i left a column here that's because i haven't defined that i want to say there is also a linear algebra view 
fitting your algebra perspective. Um, by the way, so you might wonder, like, in, this is a math 54 class. I mean, um, what's really the connection between the uh, linear algebra part and the differential equation part? Uh, from reading the textbook, it's actually not that clear. I mean, nonetheless, these are two, this word, two different textbooks. One's lay and one is S and S. They don't need to necessarily talk with each other. So my personal view why this uh, uh, two things are put together uh, by the campus is because they want you guys to uh, learn as much materials as possible per course credit. Um, uh, but indeed, uh, these two things are connected. Uh, that's why I would like to offer this uh, uh, talk about it in terms of this linear algebra perspective of solving the ODEs. Hopefully, I mean, it's only a perspective. It doesn't change the solution procedure at all. Um, although I've used this, uh, if you look at the uh, method of undetermined coefficients, I did last time I formed this T, I get the basis, I compute the matrix representation, I solve the linear system. Uh, but if you look at the book and you just assume uh, it takes this uh, linear combination of the uh, polynomials and you just collect the coefficients as I just did above, I mean, they really work because intrinsically they are the same thing. Uh, but hopefully with this linear algebra perspective, it gives you a slightly more abstract, but um, also more uh, unified perspective of these two subjects. So the linear algebra perspective is, um, you give me a T and uh, 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 it is from V to V, and this is infinite dimensional. I have no idea whatsoever how to handle an infinite dimensional operator. All I know, is to go to a finite dimensional representation. So this is uh, W is a subspace of V and the dimension of W should be finite. Then I restrict the second order differential operator from uh, V to V to W to W. And I further find a basis of W so if W is, uh, let's say, M dimensional thing, then I can go here and uh, uh, I get this matrix TB. Um, how does it work? Uh, there are two things to make this work. One is T can indeed map W to W. It's not like there is a vector in W to, after applying a T to go somewhere else. So that doesn't work. Uh, two is my uh, right-hand side should be in that uh, uh, space. And the three is indeed this problem, this T, B, I mean, should be invertible. So um, in this, uh, from this perspective, what is our choice of W here? Our choice of W is actually pretty simple. In this case, we're actually only restricting T uh, to this one dimensional subspace. So uh, because uh, if this one, uh, because this is one dimensional, all the solutions must take the form of a constant, an unknown coefficient times the basis. And you plug into the equation, you find that indeed it solved the problem. And uh, so this is sufficient. If there's a single root, though uh, this one is in this subspace, but the T applied that uh, restricted to W is zero. So we're doing something like zero X equal to non-zero, one. So it's not solvable. How did we solve the problem? We enlarged the dimension of W. We enlarged that to be exponential RT and the T exponential RT. So let's take a look at this case. So single root, where W is a span, exponential RT, T, uh, let me, 
t exponential rt and exponential rt. So these are the two bases. Um, so I write down the representation t in this with respect to this basis. So that would be t uh, uh, some uh, uh, this uh, t exponential rt with respect to the basis here, and then t exponential rt with respect to the basis. So what I know is that, uh, so this guy must be zero, right? So it's a two by two matrix. First of all, this is two by two because uh, it's a two dimensional. This one is a zero vector. So I don't care what kind of basis, it must be zero, zero. This guy, I compute it and I find that the leading term uh, with respect to the, this t here, this is always a zero. And that's just uh, you do the direct computation. And uh, now I have this here, I have a number, which is uh, t acting on this equal to some number times exponential rt. Um, what this number is depends on the equation, but there's a number here. If there's a number, then uh, the right-hand side, rt, with respect to the spaces, is a zero, one. So what I'm solving here is the following equation, zero, 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 one. The solution is naturally, I take x1 to be, x1 to be t21 inverse, x2 to be anything, let's say zero. Indeed, anything because this is in the no space. So the solution would be uh, y t t equal to one over t to one, zero. That gives you the particular solution. And then you can optionally add uh, some C1, zero, one, but this one corresponds to the north space and needs to be absorbed into the general solution anyway. So this is how we look at how we obtain this, uh, uh, this solution. Okay, so you can see we will, only this term matters and uh, that depends on the t. So uh, how, how did we obtain this solution from a linear algebra perspective? Any question? Okay, then you see where this is going. Yeah. Okay, so let me exchange the order here, so to be consistent. And uh, this one is just the span RT. RT is a three dimensional space. Let's look at this again. So from the perspective of double root, if it is a double root, then W is the span of T square RT, T RT, RT. And these two, remember, they are in the null space of T. So when I write down the representation, you do exactly the same thing I will repeat. So this is gonna be zero, 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 because they're in no space. This guy, I, uh, the first column is T acting on that, and uh, uh, T acting on that, uh, and uh, uh, the representation after computation, there will, there will be a T31. If this is also zero, uh, then we cannot solve it, because uh, zero times something cannot be non-zero. Um, if this is non-zero, then our particular solution is really zero, 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 t three, one, zero, zero, da, da, da. 
zero, zero, one. And uh, the solution, uh, at least one of them, is, uh, is, uh, uh, let me see. Ah, right, right, right. So one over t three one zero zero, which means that this constant times these spaces. Any question? Okay. So um, the next topic uh, I'm going to talk about is the so-called uh, superposition principle. AKA linear combination. It sounds like this is a big word, but it's really simple. I'll give you an example. Y double prime plus BY prime plus CY equals to C1 FT. Let's say, uh, so C2 GT, and I want to, you to solve this. Say FT is T cubed, GT is exponential T, right? So in both cases, uh, we have learned how to do that. Uh, if there is just FT, we can expand that into polynomials. If this, there is just a GT, then uh, we can use this exponential t or t times the exponential t depends on whether one is a, not a root single root a double root and uh, we'll get the solution so uh, now the question is if i do a linear combination of the right hand side how do we get a particular solution for this differential equation uh, our gut feeling is i guess I just get the solution for each of them and add, uh, do a linear combination of the two solutions, it must be the solution. Um, that's exactly what's going on, which is I first solve two problems. One is y1, so b y1 prime plus c y1 equal to ft. So, um, so this is, uh, I get one solution then I get a y2. It just needs to be a particular solution. It doesn't need to be uh, the whole thing because uh, the homogeneous part will be added later anyway. So this one gives me the y1, y2. Once I got y1, y2, then the solution to the original problem is just c1, y1, plus the C2, Y2. Why is this the case? This is because we just uh, plug into the equation. We just uh, use the operator T for simplicity. So TY, T is a linear operator. So this is TY1 plus the C2, TY2. And each of them is already equal to FT and the GT respectively, voila, so this works. Any question? Should okay. you add the solution to the homogeneous equation after y1 and y2? Yeah, so here you only need to get one solution and because of the solution to the homogeneous equation will be added later anyway with arbitrary uh, undetermined constant C1 and C2, so we don't need to add that here. Okay, thank you. Any other question? So this is just saying that uh, because the T operator is lin is uh, linear, we can basically just add the two particular solutions for F of T and G of T. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So this is really because linearity of T. So because T is a linear operator. Any other question? Okay, so um, so we're gonna use this 
uh, to handle the, um, uh, the general, more general right hand side later. Um, so it's a, just a, a linear, uh, 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 linear, uh, super, uh, uh, linear superposition. Now let's uh, continue along the line of uh, finding uh, uh, particular solution to certain right hand side. So let's see y double prime equals to this. If it were this one, we already know how to deal with it. This one has two repeated rules. So zero, this one is uh, corresponds to one. And therefore I just uh, have exponential to the T and uh, that will be to the job. And indeed, you just say exponential to the T, you find that this is the solution. Make it a little bit trickier. So uh, even though one is not a root of the homogeneous part, I multiply a polynomial in front of it. And now I want to solve the problem. Uh, again, we try an educated guess. This, the reason we want to, uh, why we want to make such a guess is because uh, exponential is nice. It takes derivatives, it just uh, gives you a constant times that. Uh, polynomial is trickier, and, but uh, it's a simple rule. Every time you just uh, reduce the order by one. So uh, if the right hand side takes the form of a polynomial times the exponential, I'd better also make the, um, the, this one to be uh, polynomial times exponential. So um, you know, in the language, again, we talked about earlier, we think the finite dimensional space is uh, the finite dimensional space is uh, t exponential t and exponential t, right? And now we restrict the w, a t, uh, to w. So uh, this is our basis, b. So this is uh, t, t exponential t with respect to the, oops, with respect to the b basis. And then this is t exponential t with respect to the b basis. So how do we compute that? Uh, so uh, let's uh, do some computation here. So t exponential t, this is t double derivative. This is uh, uh, exponential t plus t exponential t single derivative. And uh, this is uh, exponential t times two plus t exponential t. So the first one here is two, no, sorry, here is one and here is two. Similarly, here is just the exponential t, so it's the zero and one. Any question? So we find this is the invertible matrix. We know that we're in business because the right hand side, so this one is uh, one, zero. Uh, now what we want to do is to solve one, zero and uh, the solution. And uh, the solution is just, uh, so this is uh, uh, one and uh, no one and the minus two, right? So yeah, one minus two. So uh, which means I got a particular solution. This is T exponential T minus two exponential T. So um, this will be the linear algebra way of solving that. And uh, if you, of course, you can just uh, take the derivatives and uh, you match the right hand side you will get a0 and a1 with exactly the same set of equations. And uh, this is the so-called, indeed, you can see this is a method of, of undetermined coefficients. And this a0 and a1 are undetermined. And the way to solve this undetermined co coefficients is really through 
this linear system. Any question? Okay, so this is just the example. Now we would like to consider a more general form. Want to consider a more general form, y double prime plus by prime plus c y equals to t to the l exponential rt. So this is really the most general thing we're going to consider in this lecture, which is we have talked about the polynomial, we have talked about the exponential, now we talk about the polynomial times the exponential. I mean, there are numerous other possible right-hand sides, but we just won't consider explicitly. Um, you might ask, what if the polynomial plus exponential, that one we have just handled because of, through the superposition principle, that is not difficult. There is no new information there. But the polynomial times exponential, it provides some new information. So our educated guess, again, as you can imagine, it should somewhat take the form ypt equal to some sort of uh, like a, uh, so uh, like a, uh, so this is a a uh, that's my notation so this is a a m t m a m minus one t m minus one I don't know how to choose this m at this point. Maybe something will pop up times exponential rt. The question is really what is m second? So what is m? This question is essentially what is w? What is the proper subspace so that when I restrict my t, to this subspace, uh, it will give me a solution. Uh, two is once W is obtained, how to find the A's. So, but this question is really very straightforward. This is linear algebra. That is, it must be, I must be solving some sort of thing like uh, B equals to the right hand side P, B. And uh, once I get to the solution, I'm done. Any question? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, can you clarify uh, the, what is W? Exactly. What, what does that mean? W is the subspace so that you can restrict the infinite dimensional T to a finite dimensional T. So uh, more specifically here, W should take the form of the span of, uh, let's see, this is T to the M R T, T to the M minus one R T, and this is exponential R T. It always takes this form, right? Because of any particular solution, like the linear combination of this, can be written in the linear combination of these basis vectors. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Um, just a quick question about the chart that you draw. Um, you said repeated roots count as double roots, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the same thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it seems like time's up. So uh, next lecture, we'll continue exactly along this line. That is, uh, uh, we want to answer these two questions. One, what is the value of m? Is that always the case that if this is l, then you can put m equal to l? Uh, probably you guessed already this is not the case, because even when l equals zero, we found that uh, it's possible I need to multiply t squared here. But the question is, is that really the case that multiplying t squared is good enough? When should I multiply t squared? And uh, that will answer next time.
Okay.